Hi everyone, uh, wanna be quick today and get right to the point. Uh, back in the spring, I told many um, informed and involved people, and, and these include people that you see, that you might read their writings and, and see them on, uh, on uh, CNN, MSNBC, other channels, uh, told them privately that I thought Donald Trump would win Florida by double digits uh, against Joe Biden. And I really believed that at the time. Uh, I thought all of the indicators that I'm used to seeing where I've been right about the state of Florida uh, time and again, I mean, even the 2004 election, which to me, election night 2004 was the biggest shock of my life. Um, I knew within 30 minutes of Pasco County and Pinellas County reporting their first uh, returns that um, George W. Bush was going to win Florida by a much bigger margin than the polls had indicated, and, and that Kerry was done in Florida and would need to win Ohio to win the presidency, which of course he did not win, um, in spite of allegations of, of of voter fraud and all of that in, in, in 2004 in Ohio. Um, so I was fairly confident that the Republicans were cruising in Florida. Um, there are several intervening events that have taken place to make Florida now very competitive. Um, if we look at voter registration numbers, Florida is um, several points more Republican than it was in 2020 when Trump carried the state by three and a half points. So if you just went based on that, uh, Trump would win the state now by uh, eight to nine points based on that voter registration number and what happened in 2020 and what happened in 2016. But um, there are major changes. One is obviously Kamala Harris being the nominee. Um, but then I think also the Democrats um, have more of a recognition of some of their weak spots in Florida uh, demographically and in terms of voter turnout. Um, there has been an obsession for many years among Democrats with the villages. But the villages are just one place where Democrats perform very poorly among um, older voters. Uh, there's Palm Coast and Flagler County. There's uh, uh, Northport, which has kind of middle aged to, to upper age voters, um, to senior voters in uh, Sarasota County. Uh, there is um, the exurban uh, wonderland, if you want to call it that, of Port St. Lucie, another place where Democrats have. Uh, performance has been going downhill the last uh, several cycles. And then there is also um, other places like those areas throughout the state. Uh, Palm Bay and Brevard County is another one. What I'm finding is that um, the Democrats' ability to have a fresh face and someone who's speaking directly uh, in kind of inspirational um, ho hope, I, I hate to use the term hope and change, but um, more hopeful tones like Harris it has, than Biden, who was very much seen as a placeholder. Whether, I mean, I know a lot of Democrats, and I, I tend to agree with some of this analysis, say he was truly a transformative president. He's been the most effective president since Lyndon Johnson, uh, blah, blah, blah. You hear it all the time from Democratic operatives. Whatever, when, that's, that, that, that might, that's insider baseball. Most voters don't seem to really relate to that or care to that. They just see Biden as kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, a dithering old guy that was holding the place. Harris has inspired more people. And I think this is not just true among younger voters, although I see lots of enthusiasm among, among young females. Um, J.D. Vance, I, I've always said vice presidential selections don't matter. Well, they do matter if you get them wrong. And Trump's selection of J.D. Vance has turned, uh, has inspired a lot of young women to go register to vote and get active in the campaign. His, his condescending um, comments about childless cat ladies and his seeming obsession with, uh, with uh, childbearing and, uh, and parenthood, uh, which um, really offends the sensibilities of, of, of uh, many younger female voters. Obviously, uh, abortion uh, has activated voters. Uh, I, again, I don't think that ballot initiative is gonna make a huge difference in terms of uh, voter performance, but it might slightly on the margins. And if we're talking about a close, very close presidential race, it will. Um, but I think the most important thing is that the Republicans are being seen as kind of weird and because they're being seen as kind of weird and outlandish, you are seeing moderate voters over the age of 50 or 55 
um, those NPA voters, many, most of them registered as, as uh, no party affiliation, begin to peel away from the GOP. And what you're seeing is I've talked previously about the possibility that um, that these people would move towards the Democrats, but that the Democrats would need 60 percent of them or more to win the state. Well, I think what we're seeing is the Democrats now in NPA polling, particularly that demographic of NPAs are somewhere in the mid 50s. So if you get to 60 percent among senior non-party affiliated independent minded voters who tend to be more moderate, these aren't the independents that register as independents because they're further left than the Democrats or register as independents because they're further or NPAs, I should say, because they're further right than the Republicans. These are very middle of the road, kind of older, um, so in some cases, wiser voters. Um, then that's that's an alarm bell for the Republicans. Um, we're not there yet. I have to stress that if the election were today, Trump would win. He'd win by about, uh, I think, uh, three to five points in Florida. But we've gone from where I thought it would be double digits to then very mathematically, logically saying, well, based on voter registration, it'll be eight or nine points to now saying it's three to five points and tightening. So it's based on those criteria. Now, I will say there is a base for Trump votes in Florida among males white males and Hispanic males between the age of 18 and 50. And these are sort of your angry um, males. Some of them seem victimized. Um, they've been victims of the new economy in, to a sense, but I, my, personally, I don't have that much sympathy for them. I think there's, there are elements of misogyny in, in, their, in their preferences. There's elements of uh, entitlement in their preferences. And um, they've been activated, they've been made angry by the likes of um, Joe Rogan and uh, 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 Dr. Jordan Peterson, the Canadian sociologist who's leaned heavily into kind of manhood, uh, mas masculinity and race also and identity. Uh, people like that, Christopher Rufo, who's now on the board of uh, New College, he, 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 he's definitely someone who communicates with these people. So that, that remains a formidable base for the GOP in Florida, that's gonna be difficult to overcome uh, in addition to traditional conservative voters. Those are people who haven't necessarily historically been Republicans, uh, but have um, adopted MAGA and adopted Trump. And that does give um, Trump and the Republicans a bit of a hedge against what's coming. Um, in terms of down ballot races, I think um, the Republicans have had so many good cycles in Florida, they basically maxed out on seats. So I think you're gonna see Democratic pickups in, in the state legislature. You're gonna see Democratic pickups uh, on certain county commissions. Uh, we've already seen success for Democrats in school board races. Um, so watch moderate voters over the age of 50 in the state of Florida. I think they're beginning to, um, uh, they're more, a majority of them now, I think are certainly gonna vote for Harris. The question is if, if she can get to 60% among that group. She gets to 60, 62% among that group, then Florida very much becomes a toss-up.